Can you see my screen? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, so much for Dr. Lee's invitations. I'm very happy and very honored to be here to share our latest uh, projects in uh, pathological, pathological images. So uh, my name is Ray Lin Deng from Vanderbilt University. So currently I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Computer Science. So today I would like to introduce our latest work on knowledge infused efficient learning for gigapixel virtual microscopy images. So for the past few, uh, three or like four years, um, most of my research are focused on pathological images. So looking at those pathological images for a long time, I, I realized that uh, pathology, pathology is really beautiful, especially it's better than the Van Gogh in my views. And also they showed us a tremendous, very useful, health, uh, useful knowledge with the medicines and also human, bio, uh, human like biologists. So I really like the pathological images right now. So pathological images is regarded as a gold standard in clinical diagnosis. Usually pathologists will uh, cut off the biopsies on, uh, from the organ and then put them into under glasses and use the microscope to an analyze the morphological patterns on the slides. So uh, pathologists has to be on site with the microscope to do the, all of the analysis. However, with the computer's uh, improvements, the digital pathology liberates pathologies from local microscope to remote monitors. As you can see, right now pathologists can use a software on computers to do the uh, uh, pathological image quantifications and analysis at home or from home. So here's a very popular software called QPath. As you can see, there's a lot of function that uh, pathologists can use for a pathological images quantifications and annotation. So here's the image that we are looking at, the pathological images. Uh, it's very it's very big. It's like more than 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. So we call it a gigapixel high resolution images. When we deal with the issues on those large scale images, there are several challenges. So the first one, is high resolution gigapixel analysis. As we see, the image is really big. And the second one is that the large scale 3D modeling. Because um, all of the whole slide images are cut from uh, organs, which has a spatial relationship in 3D context. Therefore, when we do the quantification and annotations on whole slide images, usually we need to think about all of the knowledge in 3D context. And in the end, uh, there's a multi-scale issue because the image is really big. So usually they have the multiple resolutions for host slide images. How can we aggregate all of the knowledge from different resolution? That's very important. So let's look at the first challenges, high resolution gigapixel analysis. On the left side is a natural large scale images, which is called a cityscape. However, when it's compared with the pathological images, it's still very small. So how can we uh, deal in with large scale data for pathological images? That is the first issue we need to solve. And also on those high resolution images, we need to do dense comprehensive quantification. For example, there's a renal pathological like needle biopsy. And on these needle biopsies, we have six different tissue types that uh, mainly focus on. And with the different colors, you can see uh, all of the tissue type are sparsely distributed on the host by images. So how can we achieve the dense comprehensive quantification? That's the, uh, that's the tech, uh, tech, technical issues for, for us. And also, uh, there's very important to think about why should we do the comprehensive quantifications for pathological images? Because path, uh, when pathologists look at the uh, host slide images, they usually capture the morphological patterns uh, for disease diagnosis. For example, uh, the mean kidney lens and renal perimog volume is very important for different disease. So if we can use uh, computer vision technology to provide the quantification for those two matrix, probably we can get a more stable uh, diagnosis for disease. 
And also, different pathologists look at the same tissues may get a different diagnosis. They have a large uh, variations among pathologists. So if we can get uh, the subject quantification results, all of the results will be, uh, the diagnosis results will be more like uh, stable and more reliable. So that's the reason that why should we do the high resolution gigapixel analysis? And in the computer vision part, uh, when we try to do the segmentation or quantific quantifications for different tissue type, there's uh, one uh, uh, issue that, uh, which called a partially labeled data, which means that only one type of tissue annotation on each pathological images will show. So that's the uh, technical issue that we were dealing with. The second one is large scale 3D modeling. So whole slide images usually uh, will uh, should be aligned in 3D context because they are cut off from uh, organs, so they should have the spatial relationship in 3D context. What can we do if we associate all of the sectional whole slide images together? So here's the images for uh, a 3D dimensional representation of uh, sclerotic areoles, which is the red areoles in the right side. So if we can get the 3D modeling, the pathologist can uh, like analyze the, all of the morphological pattern with sectional glomerular pattern and make a final, de uh, decision, uh, final decision. The reason we try to do the large scale 3D modeling is that usually the, uh, the adjacent biopsies are dyed by different staining. And with different stainings, we can understand the different functional units or different phenotype features together uh, for each sample. Thereby, we need 3D, 3D modeling to align all of the tissues together. And the other reason is that there's several uh, that disease, uh, for example, here's the A-tubular, which has the spe special, uh, like special morphological patterns on glomerular. However, the pathologist has to be at, like analyzed all of the whole slide sections for each glomerular to make a confirmation that whether this glomerular is diseased or not, because these patterns might only show appears one or two slides with all sectional whole slide images. Therefore, we need a large scale 3D modeling for digital pathology. And during, uh, during the uh, registrations and alignments, on large, large scale digital pathologies, there are several uh, technical issues that uh, there's uh, missing tissues on the whole slide images when cutting off the, the tissue sections. And also uh, we try to like eliminate the missing tissues arrows when we do the association, tissue association. And also there's an artifact when scanning the digital pathology. So we need to uh, like eliminate these uh, these patterns for reduce registrations and uh, and association. The last challenge is multi scale analysis, because uh, usually the uh, host slide images are stored in a pyramid structure which contain the multiple resolution such as five time, ten time, twenty time, forty time uh, in host slide images. And different resolution will show different morphological patterns on slides. For example, for 40 time resolutions, you can uh, get the cells level patterns and five time resolution, you can get regions level pattern. Therefore, pathologists will carefully examine biopsies and multiple scales and aggregate all of the features together to make a final uh, decision. So if we look at the colon biopsies here, Usually pathologists will uh, like analyze the tissue at four different resolutions with eight different tissue types to make the final decisions that whether this patient has a Crohn disease. So different tissues should be analyzed at different scales for a Crohn disease diagnosis. And also if we try to do the uh, quantification on renal biopsies, we need to focus on different resolutions to get uh, the optimal segmentation and quantification results for different tissue types. 
So those are three main challenges on like digital pathologies that we are looking at. So right now, the deep learning model is very popular in computer vision's community. So we got natural images, and then we use deep learning model, and we can achieve such as classifications, segmentation, detection, and generate generalization task. Uh, the advantage of deep learning model is that we can use a computer system design to do a large computing for images, and also we can use the GPU accelerators to achieve the downstream task results in a uh, in efficient way. So what if we try to like change the data sets to our digital pathological images, and whether we can use deep learning models to help us solve those three challenges for digital pathology community. So how can we achieve uh, those uh, the, the, the improvements with different hidden layer design in deep learning? So today we will provide our solution, which is knowledge infused learning. So what is knowledge infused learning? Right now we have deep learning model because the, the, the good reason, the good part of deep learning model is that with different hidden layer design, the deep learning model can uh, learn or understand the high resolution vector or patterns by themselves, which can provide the latent patterns from the images. And also, we already know several domain knowledge on digital pathology. For example, we know there are several like tissue type on the host layer images. And we all, we all know the different scales will provide different patterns from uh, like cells level, uh, structure level, and region level information. So how can we combine them together? Therefore, we can combine the uh, domain knowledge with different hidden layer design to improve the deep learning model to achieve better performance. That's the definitions of knowledge infused efficient learning. So with the knowledge infused efficient learning, we provide our solutions for different challenges. For high resolution gigapixel analysis, we provide our OmniSec single network. For large scale 3D modeling, we provide the map 3D tracking and quantification. For multi-scale issue, we provide our cross scale attention modeling instant learning. So let's look at the first challenges. So quickly recap the, the motivations. The quantification results is heavily related to the uh, disease diagnosis. And the pathologies, uh, the human examinations from pathologists have a big variations. Therefore, we need the, uh, the uh, densely object quantification segmentation to support pathologists make a decision. If we look at the renal pathologies, ideally uh, we should get a dense multi-class annotation, which means that six different tissue uh, type annotation should be uh, appeared on each region or each patches. However, for the digital pathology community, usually we only have partially labeled data, which means that only one type of tissue annotation on each pathological images will show. Uh, so um, there's uh, two main reasons to uh, make partially labeled data sets. The first one is that the annotation is very label intensive because the image is really big, it's very large. So usually they have to use uh, several pathologies to focus on each different tissue type to make annotation. So each pathology will only focus on a specific one tissue type on each images. And then there's no aggregations uh, performance to <laughs> aggregate all of the um, like uh, annotation together. And the second issue for partial label data set is that it's very difficult to show dense labels at the same resolution. For example, if we look at the previous regions on uh, at five time resolution, it's very clear to see the glomerular, which is capsule and tops here. However, if we try to look at the small object PDC, it's very hard with the uh, like light blue area. That's very small to annotate or recognize. However, if we zoom in to 40 time resolutions, 
the capsule and tops is too big and also it's not complete to understand it's too big. However, at these resolutions, the PDC is very good to annotate it or recognize. Therefore, we cannot show all of the tissue annotation or segmentation results at the same uh, resolution. Therefore, uh, for the pathological images, we need multi-scale annotation with partially labeled data because tissue will be annotated on their opt optimal resolution. So previously, there are several work to solve the partial label data issue. So they provide uh, the multiple network uh, design. So each network will fo only focus on each single tissue type. And also they provide the multi-head design, which they use the shield uh, encoder and the different decoder for different tissue type. So previously, uh, we very uh, evaluate that the single dynamic network uh, can achieve the better results for partially labeled data uh, with the shield backbone. And uh, uh, we believe that a single dynamic network uh, is like uh, is a super, can achieve superior performance rather than the multiple network and multi head network. When preparing the data sets with partially labeled data, we know that the scale information is, is very important for digital pathologists. What if we let the model understand not only the tissue type, but also the scale information? For example, for the capsule, for the tubs, we let the model know they are like at five time resolution. And for the tubular vessel, they are 10 time resolution. For the peritubular uh, categorized, they are 40 time resolution. What if we uh, let, uh, let the network understand the scale of our knowledge to improve the quantification performance? Therefore, we improve the uh, single dynamic network with scale aware knowledge. That at the same time, we not only input the task ID, which is uh, show the tissue size, a uh, tissue type, uh, and we also provide the scale ID, which shows the scales uh, information. So here's our uh, network. Uh, the most important part for this network is that we generate the model aware encoding vector to a uh, multi model, multi scale uh, uh, like design, which contain the class aware encoding and also scale aware encoding. So after that, we receive the three different high level uh, vector, which is class aware vector scale a whale vector and also the high level image feature from encoder. And then we try to use triple product to aggregate or fuse three different high level vector together. And then we use the one single convolution layer called controller to understand those high level vector and then provide the parameters for the dynamic head in the end of the model. And after we receive the parameters from the high level vectors, we use the feature map from the previous decoder, and then uh, the dynamic head will tell us uh, what's the segmentation results from the uh, input data. Since right now we can control the task ID and the scale ID to let the model understand, like right now at this time, what kind of tissue type that we are looking at so we can enlarge our data sets because previously each uh, images only have partially label uh, for supervised learning. However, we can create several pseudo labels for each patch uh, to enlarge our data sets because ideally for each pixel on the images, usually they have uh, they are they are only belonging to a specific one tissue type like except the capsule and tubular. For example, the, 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 the tubular pixels only belong to tubular. It cannot become a like glomerular pixel. Therefore, if we create several pseudo label on each patch, uh, we can let the model understand the spatial relationship between different tissue types. So here's our data. We use the public data set, and also we use the dye similarity coefficient post of distance and mean surface distance to evaluate our performance. 
So those are our results. We compare our model with several multiple network and multi head design, and it's turned out that uh, our single dynamic network achieved a better uh, quantitative result. And also our single dynamic network can achieve better qualitative qualitative result with less false positive error, false negative error, and morphological error. And here we also show the intermediate representation to evaluate our theoretical uh, design. Like if we try to stable the the scale of well knowledge, which only the all of them are at 10 times, and change the class aware vector, uh, the segment from the same feature map from the last layer of the model, they can provide a different segmentation result. And then if you try to stable the class aware vector and try to change the scale aware vector, which like tell them like they, those are like five times, those are 40 times, we are uh, from the same feature map uh, from the last layer of the model, they can also get different segmentations. It turns out that the class aware uh, vector and the scale aware vector is not like influenced the feature map uh, from the decoder and the encoder. And the decoder of encoder of, of our model can uh, recapture the common features from each images. And we can only use, uh, we can control uh, like uh, which tissue type that we are looking at, at which uh, resolutions with our class aware vector and the scale aware vector. And here is the com comparisons of computation. Our model can achieve better dice scores with fewer model parameters. So uh, our model, it's turned out that our model can use the partial label uh, to train the model in the training stage and then achieve densely segmentation at a uh, testing stage. So previously, all of the, our model are focused on the patch-wise uh, segmentation and quantification. So if we try to uh, achieve the slice-wise uh, application, it's still uh, time, very time consuming to aggregate all of the tissue type segmentation together. Therefore, we improve our OmniSec pipeline to use GPU to accelerate segmentation merging and majority vote to achieve the robust segmentation results on host -like image level with less time. So here's the acceleration results. Our uh, accelerated pipeline can achieve uh, host -like images segmentation with less uh, with less um, uh, time. So to conclude, OmniSec dynamic single network, we use class aware knowledge and scale aware knowledge to do the uh, multiple tissue segmentation by using a partially labeled images, and we create pseudo label learning during the training to model spatial correlations and consistency between different tissue types. And our model can achieve superior segmentation performance with fewer parameters. And also we can achieve densely uh, segmentations by only use partially labeled data. And with our acceleration pipelines, we can achieve whole slide wise densely segmentation uh, in one line of, of command with a Docker. So let's look at the second challenge, large scale 3D modeling. The reason that think, we want uh, to- uh, uh, Rini? Yeah. So yes. can, you, can you pause for a moment? Because uh, like the, the information you have presented so far uh, are very extensive. I, I wonder oh, okay. whether, whether any of the uh, audience have uh, questions regarding the multi-scale analysis uh, scheme yes. uh, Rini has presented so far. Oh yeah. So I have a very uh, straightforward question. That is, yes. Uh, instead of using this scale um, coding, uh, mm -hmm. how is it uh, performed using the pyramid-like network? Oh yeah. So, um, so here we only show the uh, 
the results that already use the scale aware knowledge, right? Uh, and we also have the difference in house uh, data sets to evaluate. It turned out that with the scale aware knowledge and without the scale knowledge, uh, knowledge, the scale aware knowledge can improve the performance. For example, uh, like we evaluate the performance with uh, another in house data set, it's it improved like uh, 3%. Uh, for capsule segmentation and also like 3% for uh, proximal tubular segmentation. But here we only show the uh, the improvement result with scale aware knowledge. Okay. Okay. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Hi, this is Wei. Can I ask you one question about your evaluation metrics? Maybe. Yes, um, please. Mm -hmm. On your slide 38. Um, so you Thank mentioned you. about biological error. Can you tell me more yes. about that? Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, for here, the morphological arrow is like, um, as we can see on the right side, the segmentation is not complete when we try to segment the vessel. But our model can achieve the uh, better result to segment the complete the, the tissue, uh, the tissue type. So that's uh, what we call the morphological arrow, like uh, on the qualitative result. And some of them, uh, maybe like the uh, capsule is not complete or the proximal tubule is not complete. However, we can achieve more like a stable uh, uh, segmentation result. Is this something like um, automatic measure or is something like manually? Oh, yes. Uh, so the for, for the left side, I think we choose uh, several tissue type randomly, like uh, for different uh, tissue type. And in the right side, we choose the best cases, median cases, and worst <laughs> cases to show the general performance on quanti uh, for qualitative results. So those like best, median, worst are directly uh, selected by the uh, result with the dice with the dice score. Yeah, then is is it automatically diagnosed as morphological error from the best? Uh, 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 for those like uh, selection, I uh, we didn't do the automatic diagnosis. Like we just like use the human examination to evaluate, and then we yeah for those error. I see. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. OK, let's move on to the next section. We are uh, like in a quite tight time today because you, are, you are, have only covered one third of your slides, right? Uh, OK, sorry about that. Yeah, I will speed up. OK, so uh, thank you for those like uh, very insightful comments. And the second uh, challenge is we uh, try to do the large scale 3D modeling because we need to understand the quantification results or morphological patterns in 3D contact if we associate uh, the, the, the host line images uh, together. So in the uh, technical parts, uh, there's a several challenges when during the 3D registrations or association. The first one is large scale quantification. For example, if we try to annotate all of the glomerulites on host line images, usually on each host line image, they have more than 100 glomerulites sparsely distributed. So it's very hard for pathologists to manually annotate all of the glomerulus scattered. And when we do the associations, um, there's a missing tissue, uh, uh, missing, uh, missing tissue issues and also artifact issue. So the, the question is that, how can we receive good association based on the good registration? Therefore, we propose our MAP3D pipeline uh, for, for this question. So the first step, just do the uh, object detection for glomerular. We use our <laughs> previous knowledge, previous uh, model called CircleNet to detect all of the glomerular on host line images. And here's the CircleNet detection result. So within the blue bounding box, those are glomerular. And after we receive the detection results, we try to do the registration, which is the most important part for our pipeline. So we select to uh, we select to use two stage 
uh, registration for host by images. Um, in radiologists, usually we only use one step, like non rigid registration. Like there are a lot of like deep learning model called a voxel morph or something to um, to register the radiology data. However, for digital pathologies, uh, we need to use the key points match registration as the in, uh, registration initialization for the second non rigid registration. The reasons that we need to do the key points match registration is that we have the missing tissue and artifact issues when we do the registration. So the non rigid registration is not reliable if, if they uh, encounter those missing tissue and artifact. And also, if we look at host like images shape, uh, they have uh, uh, they, they have large displacements and the rotation. However, the non rigid registration cannot um, perfectly to solve those large displacements and the rotation. Therefore, we uh, in the first step we try to use the densely key point match registration uh, to uh, to to achieve the global registration in the beginning, and then to do the second stage non rigid registration. And it turned out that the deep learning based solution, which is called SuperGlue, is more robust for intensity and contrast variations in our data set. And in our model, we also provide the interleaf registration for missing tissue and artifact, which means that not only we do a adjacent pairwise registration, which is 726, 625, 524, we also do the interleaf pairwise registration, which is like 123, 224, 325. Why should we do the interleaf registration for this? So the reason is that we try to achieve the dual part registration. If we, uh, if there's uh, registration arrows between the slice T to slice T plus one, we can directly go from slice T to slice T plus two, and then go back to T, uh, slice T plus one from uh, T plus two. Therefore, we can achieve the missing tissue and artifact impact when we do the registration. And we we try to know uh, which pair is uh, is failure, which pair is success successful automatically. So we uh, uh, propose the failure registration identification. So we try to let the slice T to slice T plus one, and then try to let them to T uh, slice T plus two. And also we have the interleaf registration. We can let slice T plus two go back to uh, the physical space uh, on the slice T. So if the slice T and the slice T prime can make a consistency, which is which means that they are similar, uh, we believe that those two pairwise registration are good. So after we receive the better registration results on host slide images, we try to do the dual pass association for glomerular. So uh, the main point for association issue is that the, it's the missing tissue. So if there's no missing tissue, we can use the intersections over unions to associate the glomerular sections in 3D context because the assumption is that if all of the tissues are aligned very well, the glomerular can share the spatial correlation shape in 3D context. Therefore, we can very easily to associate the glomerular without missing tissue. However, if the GT plus one <laughs> is missing, we use our dual pass asso association to directly associate G uh, glomerular T to glomerular T2. So here's our data. We use the 14 in-house Moschini sections, and all of them are have uh, contained 7 to 78 mm meter thick sections. And also we use standard multi-object tracking matrix to evaluate the uh, tracking result. And also we use registration arrow uh, to evaluate the registration performance. Uh, sorry, so Rudy, those, but, uh, uh, how do yes. you get the ground truth? Uh, you mean the registration ground truth? Yes. Yeah, the registration ground truth we use the uh, the one of our pathologies just annotated 
like one or two glomerular sections on each sec uh, on each host line image, sectional host line images. So we use that as the ground truth. So those uh, annotations are like uh, ground truth by a human. Okay. So we assume that if the registration performance is good, all of the glomerular sections should be has less registration error. The perfect one is like zero, right? So those are quant quantitative results. So with the DOPA registration and DOPA associations, our Mac3D can achieve a better model object tracking scores. And our two-stage registration can achieve uh, con like consistent reg registration performance with less registration error. And if we take a look at the qualitative results, in the middle part, we have missing tissue uh, missing tissue, and our dual pass association can connect two glomerular section with missing tissue, which means that the 170 glomerular can associate well with our MAP3D pipeline. And uh, after that, we like improved our previous pipelines. We try to get a better registration performance with for each glomerular, so we provide the segmentation modalities with to uh, within the uh, registration pipeline and segmentation modality can resolve the large displacement issue. And we also use the intensity modality from previous pathological images to uh, align uh, the glomerular well with adjacent tissue information. And also we have two improvements algorithm to eliminate false positive of uh, detection results and also to get a better association sequences. It's turned out that with those two improvements, the false positive object can be de diminished by segmentation result. And also the multimodal registration can assist in reconnecting discon discontinued identification from previous MAP3D pipeline. And in the end, we achieve the better multi-object tracking performance. So after we receive a better registration performance for each columnar, we can do the 3D reconstruction and quantification. So those uh, reconstruction and quantification can directly use for volume calculation and the 3D phenotype analysis for pathologies. And during the pipeline, uh, we realized that the registration is very important for digital pathology. Therefore, we form our two-stage registrations pipeline into a doctor, Docker, and also we evaluate the registration performance with a multi-standing needle biopsy dataset from Leeds University. And it turned out that with the two-stage uh, two registrations, we achieve less registration error. So to sum up our MAP3D pipeline, we propose a large-scale glomerular identification and association with 3D sectional host line images to solve the potential issues such as missing error or artifact. And also we improved our model to achieve 3D glomerular, glomerular reconstruction and volume estimations for sectional host line images. And we also form our two-state registration pipeline into uh, one common line with our Docker. So uh, is there any uh, comments or questions for this pipeline? So any comments from the audience, especially like Zhengdong and Sagan, where you are doing similar registration related studies? Okay, I, I, I will go first with my question on the, do you have any like rotation issues in your object? A uh, rotation issue. I think yeah, the rotation yeah. issue is yeah, it's mainly mm -hmm. focused on the. If we go back to these images, so if you look at the first row, mm -hmm. when when the pathology try to scan the host line images, they have very large rotation issue. Like some is okay. forty five angle, some is ninety ninety degrees angle. So that's why we need to use the key points registration in the beginning. Uh, because key point registration just use the uh, similar 
points between two different uh, two like between the pairwise images and then try to do the affine registration. So it's very uh, good for large displacements and rotation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And secondly, um, a, a, lo a large portion of you of, of this pipeline relying on the uh, correct identification of the landmarks. Right. Yes. Exactly. So, uh, so one, one thing you have solved is the uh, missing landmarks is issue by the cycle uh, correspondence. So yes. um, I wonder, like, any other uh, tricks that you had for this landmark based reg registration? Um, so previously, uh, so for the uh, previous, uh, previously we only used the, the like the dual pass registration and dual pass association for uh to solve the missing tissue because like uh we cannot <laughs> change the missing tissue part like there's a several models that try to generate the missing tissue part but that's not our solutions for me for our like project pipeline we only focus on the exist data itself and then we try to use the algorithm or other like the the, the interleaf registration to get better results to uh, the, 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 like to eliminate the missing tissue or artifacts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. if I may ask, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I'm curious about your failure um, registration metrics. Yes. If they mm -hmm. are, uh, you find some of the registrations are not good, then how do you mm -hmm. deal with them? And do you find any reason that why some of them are not good? Oh yeah, that's really good question. So um, so during my like uh, experiments here, you can see that the key point registration sometimes is not really good because of the, the intensity and the contrast variation because different scanning uh, scanning the digital pathology at different time or with different machine will have a large intensity differences. So when we do the key points registration or non rigid registration, they have some like uh, the failures during uh, with those two kind of technologies. So that's the things we call we we have to know whether the registration is good or not. And also, if the artifact or missing tissue is too big. Uh, so for these host line images, probably is not uh, very obvious. However, if we're dealing with needle biopsies, sometimes they will like uh, missing the whole part of the needle biopsies. So that might be the issue that we need to know which pair uh, we got a good registration, which pair is not. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, this is Jax. Uh, can you uh, go okay. back to the uh, registration slide? Yes. Do you mean this one? Uh, yeah. So, so like as shown on on the figure, like we can see a few um small and large circles. Like they are not um paired. Like how how do you um. Like I'm wondering, like how many uh, key point pair can you extract mm -hmm. from my uh, from my two images? Okay, uh, that, that's a very good question. So we use the uh, technologies called super glue. So it's a deep learning based uh, like uh, key points registration. So the first step, they just use a graph neural network to understand the two pair images and to select uh, nearly 100 to 200 like key points, which means that probably they believe those like pairwise key points can share the similarity patterns on two different images. And then we will select it, the, 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 the key point pairs. Uh, usually we will select it with the, the descriptor displacements. There's, uh, we didn't select a threshold, like uh, how many key points that we will use. We only select according to the distance, like between two descriptors. Like we only like if they if those pairs keep a key point pairs share the consistency patterns like with the less distance, like we will use that. So normally for those like large scale 
identification uh, large scale host site images, we can get nearly like 50 pairs on pairwise registration. Okay, so as you can see, uh, have you uh, yeah. like yeah. have you verified like mm -hmm. the quality of those pairs, like to see like if they are like truly aligned? How do you know uh, yeah, uh, they are legit? Yeah, uh, the evaluation performance between two uh, two key points we use the still use the like descriptor uh, like descriptor uh, distance uh, inside of the pipeline, and also we use registration arrow to evaluate whether those like two uh, those glomerular can align well with those uh, like uh, key points. So that's the evaluation okay. that we use for uh, okay, with the registration arrow. Yeah. Okay. So if you uh, found some outliers, like how did you mm -hmm. deal with those outliers? Uh, if I'm understand correct, so you mean outlier is like the uh, artifact or something? I mean the outlier in the uh, key point pairs. Oh yeah. Oh, so we just elite uh, like delete it. When doing the alpha registration, because we will uh, generate the alpha transmissions matrix with the like uh, strong key points pair. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Raining, you have ten minutes left for your last okay. section. Yeah, I think I think we're good. Yeah. Thanks. All right, uh, the last uh, challenge as well as the last project we would like to show is the uh, cross scale attention based uh, multi instant learning, which is uh, is present on Dr. Lee's workshop. So previously, uh, we know the host line image is really large, so they have a large scale tissues and uh, the annotations is very uh, uh, the annotation is very like label intensive. So generally we only can get a slice level or patient level label rather than the pixel level or a patch level label. So how can we use the slice level or patient level labels for a digital pathology analysis? Therefore, we propose, uh, therefore there's a very big community called multi instant learning in computer vision, which means that so each host line images is considered as a bag that contains many instant or patches uh, captured from the host line images. So if, uh, for example, if here's the bag with several patches, and if there are any of its patches is disease related, which is like positive patches with the red color, <laughs> we mark this bag as positive. However, if all of the patches are negative, we mark this bag as negative. So previously, uh, we know that if we want to make a final decision of disease diagnosis, we need to look at the different tissue type uh, uh, at different uh, resolutions. So uh, there are a lot of um, previous work try to form the multi scale design into multi scale uh, multi instant learning. For example, this uh, this one uh, work try to uh, try to ca capture the patches from different scale and put them into the bag and um, try to design them as an iterative instance inside the bag. <laughs> and here's the model. Uh, at the same locations, they try to uh, get the feature uh, concatenations together, which means that like five times, 10 times, 20 times feature, they put, they concatenate all of the feature together as a global pattern. For each slice. And also, there's the model try to use theoretical feature fusions, which means that for the uh, high resolution patterns, are inherent pattern from the uh, the uh, the low, uh, sorry, my bad, the, the low resolution patterns just inherit the uh, feature vector from the high resolutions. However, all of the previous work cannot achieve the holistically knowledge learnings cross the, with the cross scale relationship because we wish that when we do the deep learning training, 
we can uh, we want model understand at the same regions which one is more important uh, among the different scale. Maybe at the uh, in at it in each regions. Maybe at this time, 10 time resolution pattern is more important for disease diagnosis. And in that region, maybe 20 times is important. However, those image, those uh, like work cannot achieve those holistic learning knowledge for pro scale relationship. So our model try to understand the importance of regions from three different resolutions and try to provide pro scale attention map for each whole site images, and then to make a final decisions for Crohn disease diagnosis. So here's our pipeline. The first step, we try to use contrastive learning model SIM to extract the phenotype feature from all of the patches. And also we do the, uh, you use the uh, mo deep learning model from deep attention modeling and learning to encoding all of the patterns from each back. And the important, the, the most important part of our proposed model is that we provide a cross-scale attention mechanism, uh, which means that at same locations, we try to let the model understand which resolution is more important for disease diagnosis. So we have like 50 HNE staining Excellent colon biopsies for training, and also we have 168 extending colon biopsies for testing. And also we use ROC, uh, AUC, and also PRAP scores, as well as the classification accuracies to evaluate the performance. And as you can see, with the cross scale attention mechanisms, our proposed model can achieve better classification performance for the uh, Crohn disease diagnosis. Since we already have the attention map uh, across the scales, so we can do the attention map visualization to show the uh, the AI based hint for a disease diagnosis. So we uh, like print all of the attention map across the five time, ten time, and twenty time. It turns out that the AI believe that at twenty time attention map, um, they highlight the chronic inflammatory infiltrate. While at the same time, the AI model highlights the creep structure. So uh, we believe uh, we believe that it's kind of like explain explainable AI that the AI believe at the same time the creep structure pattern is important, and at twenty time the chronic inflammatory infiltrate is important. So uh, this model we propose a cross scale attention mechanism to uh, to Crohn disease diagnosis with interscale knowledge. And also with the attention visualizations, uh, we present the uh, AI based scale awareness and distinctive, distinctive contribution to disease diagnosis. So those uh, are three uh, projects that we are uh, working for to, to solve the previous three challenges on digital pathology. And to sum up uh, the, the presentations today, we try to use the domain knowledge on digital pathologies images uh, into the hidden layer design with deep learning model to achieve the better uh, like performance for, uh, for pathological AI. So that's all of my presentation today. Thank you so much for your listening, and I would like to receive all of the uh, comments and questions from you all. Thanks. Thank you so much, Rini. Uh, it, it's really a, a very informative talk, and we learned a lot. Um, some background here is um, I'm specifically interested in your work, especially the second part, because we are okay. having a, a lot of uh, discussion and recent uh, technical like uh, difficulties in dealing with the uh, 3D reconstruction from slide-wise images, and and actually. Uh, we have the very uh, similar issue from your that uh, first of all, whether we shall do the landmark based registration and mm -hmm. in case the landmark is missing or uh, damaged, what we shall do, and also mm -hmm. uh, setting up the ground truth. And yes. Although, although we, are, we, are, we are facing very different uh, modalities, but I, I, I believe your experience really uh, guides us a lot. 
I, I, I hope the people who are uh, investigating in the in those broad projects will learn from yours. Um, any further questions from the audience? Okay. If not, we can conclude today's meeting. Um, the meeting is recorded, which I will later uh, like, uh, show it to our lab director, uh, Quan Chen Li, and to see whether he has some further uh, comments or interest in, in like a more close collabor uh, collaboration with yours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee, to invite me to be here. It's very honored. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone.